Hey, everybody. This is the First Lady Erica with Women of the Stars. And today I was, it's so funny, I was digging through some papers on my desk and I found this saying from Francis Scovell Shin. And I'm going to look this up anyway because I, I want to make sure that I say it properly. Properly? <laughs> say it, yeah, Francis Scovell Shin. So this, the quote that I wanted to share was, there are no obstacles in the divine mind. Therefore, there is nothing to obstruct my good. All obstructions now vanish from my pathway. Doors fly open, gates are lifted, and I enter the kingdom of fulfillment under grace. And so recently I took my trip to Egypt and I had so many problems because I was not prepared for my trip financially in that what happened? the ceiling caved in because of the hurricane and the ceiling tiles fell and the insurance company and FEMA, like nothing worked. And then I got the contractor to come and work on the roof and then everyone refused to pay. So it's like this thing going on. Then on top of it, because the roof was getting done, my car was parked next door at the church. And something just moved me, my intuition, and said, I don't want my car there. Even though the, you know, the dumpsters are moved, I just know that there's so many nails out there that I just know if I bring my car back over here, the tires are gonna go flat. But at about one o'clock in the morning, I went out there and got in the car. And then I looked down and I see glass everywhere. There's a hammer on the front seat. And like, oh my God, why is the steering wheel like flush in my lap? Like the steering wheel is like right there in my lap. And I'm thinking, what happened? And I could see where someone destroyed it. I mean, they absolutely destroyed the steering wheel so badly that I thought, oh, if I could just put the key in here, at least I can take my car and put it in my yard so that it would be safe. But it was so ripped apart, not even the key would go in the ignition. So that happened, right? The next day I went out in my yard and I looked all over the ground and I saw all those nails. I could put, put a picture of that too. I mean, I found two handfuls of nails, right? Just scattered in the driveway all across the yard. But then I went back out maybe even the second day and I saw where there was a trail of nails in the street, these big, huge screws. It was unbelievable. So... It was like this damned if you do, damned if you don't situation where no matter what, either my tires, I would have had all these flat tires or I still would have had to pay the deductible to get the car fixed. But you know, it's like, push, put these things aside. I already got my trip for Egypt paid for. And I think too, some you, you know, I know I even considered like, should I go to Egypt? Like, can I do this right now because I'm going through all of this stuff? And I did have to say that if I, if I feel like if I canceled it or pulled back and got my money back and, and did all that, that would I have ever gone again, you know? Cause I, I could always think of obstacles where I could do this instead of that. And so I just saw it more as this situation where this was this once in a lifetime thing. 
even though there's still chances in the future. Because I do believe that if you cancel now, you're going to always find more reasons not to go in the future. Because I could make these things an obstacle. The down payment on the roof or the deductible of the car or, you know, these different unforeseen expenses that just kept popping up. So I went on my trip and I was thinking, why is this weird situation happening money-wise? I couldn't transfer money or maybe I just didn't think of it, but I didn't have it in the right place because American Express only works in America. I just didn't have my money in the right place. But then I got to this point where I was like, I don't have any money. Like, you know, I just, I didn't have it in the right place to do the things I want to do. And a lot of people are taking cash. They don't have card machines. Everybody doesn't have card machines and stuff like that. And um, they don't take whatever form of payment that you have. So I was just in this stuck situation and I, I was like, no, nah. if money is no object, usually people say if money is no object, but I think we don't get a clear understanding of that because it really isn't if money is no object. I don't think it's clear enough. It's like, what if money was no obstacle? If everything you did, because people say, oh, I can't afford it. I don't have enough money. Da, 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 da. And so we make money this obstacle. And so we make our decisions solely based on, do we feel like we have enough money or do we see with our eyes that we have enough money because some things are more ethereal. It's more of an illusion type concept, this thing money. Cause yeah, there's energy exchanges and there's, there's these things that happen, but we literally have the ability to make things appear out of thin air, don't we? You know, or do we say, no, I can't do it because of this particular obstacle. And so I really start to think about it. What if money was never an obstacle? Or how about what if I never make money an obstacle? Because that's imaginary, illusionary, matrix type thinking that money is an obstacle for you, right? And when I was on my trip, I started taking donations. I started um, taking pictures of items and making sales of items. And within 24 hours, definitely less than 48, a little bit more than 24, I made $1,300. So I made money appear out of nowhere with nothing. Like I'm in Egypt. I'm not going to give you your necklace or whatever the item is, or, you know, I was putting people's names in the temples and sending prayers like straight into the ISIS temple with offerings and stuff like that. So it wasn't something that was tangible for people, but they sent me money. And all of a sudden it was like, Phew. was money really an obstacle? I think it, it was a huge lesson for me because what I discovered was that no matter where I am, I can make things happen. I can manifest what it, whatever it is that I need. And so it takes me back to this. There, is, there are no obstacles in the divine mind. Well, what is the divine mind? We gotta get our mindset, right? Connecting more to source, connecting with the divine because this is where our creative flow comes from, right? These are where the ideas and infinite intelligence come from a divine mind. So there are no obstacles in the divine mind. There is nothing to obstruct my good. There's an illusion in front of us that all these good things and beautiful things that we want to do that they can be obstructed. 
but why would source want to obstruct you from doing what you know is good or what is good? I know we say we want to have divine timing, but there is nothing to truly obstruct my good. All obstacles vanish from my pathway, doors fly open, gates are lifted, and I enter the kingdom of fulfillment under grace. So my teacher, Magical Michelle, likes to say, path cleared, obstacles removed, nothing can stand in my way. It's very similar to this. But we have to know to ask for that, right? We have to know to put that request out into the universe so that we can make that kind of thing happen for us. So we can look for the divine path and the solution or we can just look for the obstacles and just give up. And today of all days, this is where I'm at because I just see these obstacles or illusions of obstacles coming forward saying, you're gonna pay more for this and we're gonna raise the price of that. And we're gonna, and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna, let myself be suffocated or stifled by these things coming up because it's not even real. It doesn't even exist, right? Because are they really hurdles or are they just challenges to challenge me to connect more with the divine and get my mind into the divine mind where all my solutions are there and these obstacles are just illusions and if I focus on solutions, what we get, we connect with our thoughts. What are we thinking about? If we think more about solutions or do we think more with problems? If we think more about problems, then we connect more with problems. We bring more problems. But if I connect more with solutions, then I walked around my house and I said, you know what? I'm not going to worry about the fact that my car insurance company is going to charge me an extra $100 a month because I'm rich and I'll start to look around my house at the ways that I can be creative and the assets that I have that I can put together and create with the services that I can offer. And that's nothing to me anymore, right? Because I know that I have an infinite amount of wealth if I dig inside and give my services or create certain items. And I know that's a big thing for people when they see um, spiritual people and they want to charge and it's like, do you understand where we are right now that even as a spiritual person, like if my roof can cave in, like I actually do need money, right? I, you know, I actually do need to make a living. So don't begrudge a spiritual person because they want to charge you money. They have to put themselves out there because they're being challenged in ways. And it's up to them to find their way through, right? These challenges. And if you can offer them a gift and support them in their business, why shouldn't you? And then at the same time, why shouldn't you, as you feel challenged, because right at that point, you feel like money is the obstacle for you to receive that service or, or the things that you want, why shouldn't you also remove money as the obstacle by removing yourself from the mindset of poverty because we deserve all good things, right? I deserve all good things. I give good to people, so I deserve all good things. If you give good and put out good and you nurture and take care of others, do you not deserve all good things? So if all the good things costed money, why, why should the creator withhold from you the good things? I can sit and gripe about the things that I don't have, or I can reach out into the infinite good and get the things that I want in exchange, by making exchanges. So I don't, 
follow that premise of thinking that everything should be free, that that even that monetary system at this point is put there to see how much of a wimp you are versus how much of a champion you are. Are you just going to lay down and whine about how much things cost? Or are you going to challenge yourself to put that out there? I know I had a, a saying on my wall one time. It was written, uh, universe, if I'm so great, show me. So here it is when we have to see the challenge and test our faith and belief and our level of manifestation. So are we just going to lay down and wait for things? Or are we going to actually put things into action and make things happen and, and bring the good towards us that we desire? This is something to think about. It's something on my mind. But yeah, why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you have all good things? And if some of those good things cost money, then challenge the universe to give you those things, right? I'm gonna go ahead and pull an angel and gemstone card. Let's see if it lines up with the message that we have today. These are gemstones, but they also have affirmations. Huh, that one fell out, right? <laughs> Wait till you see it. It's a good one. All right, I'm just gonna pull one more affirmation card unless something flies out. So the one that flew out, blue lace agate. And you can read it. Do you feel like you keep missing opportunities? Do you wish to recognize opportunities when they knock? Have faith that divine timing is at play in your life. Believe that you are always in the right place at the right time with the right people. I'll tell you something about that. As I met a teacher in Egypt, she told me to ask myself this, are you the right person doing the right thing at the right time with the right people? So angel of divine timing, favorable opportunities present themselves to me in many ways. I recognize these opportunities and follow through on their promise. I always seem to be in the right place at the right time and I enjoy the benefits of divine timing. I think that goes exactly along with what, what we were talking about. Okay, so turquoise. What do you wish to express? How do you wish to express yourself? Is there something you need to say to someone? Expression comes in many forms. Meditate on what you would like to say, then say it. Explore Native American spiritual teachings. And creativity is expression, right? So if you have something you need to create, go ahead and create it and express to the world the messages that you got. Those are your light codes. Those, those are your healings that you have to give to other people. The motivation, the inspiration, the love, the nurturing, the beauty, the sparkle, give those things out. Angel of expression. I open my consciousness to various forms of expression. I express myself with ease and grace. My creativity is activated. I am a channel of divine inspiration. I receive insights and wisdom from various cultures and philosophies. Divine timing and expression. Believe that you are in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. That's up to you to figure that out. You know how you feel when you're around certain people doing certain things. Are you on your path? But definitely there are no obstacles in the divine mind. 
challenges, maybe, but challenges are meant to be, you know, navigated. There are no obstacles in the divine mind. Therefore, nothing, there is nothing to obstruct my good and obstacles now vanish from my pathway. Doors fly open, gates are lifted, and I enter the kingdom of fulfillment with grace and ease. A lot of things we want to do with grace and ease. So that's my message. Are these challenges obstacles to you? Is money an obstacle to you? Is fear an obstacle to you? What are the obstacles that you have put in front of yourself and decided that this is what's gonna stop you from gaining the good that you have been promised? And that's it from the First Lady Erica. Like, 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 press the like button, subscribe, hit the bell so that the next time we have a talk, you can be there and you can be ready and you can participate in the live chats and look forward to more messages like this.